Good evening, everyone. This is Nicholas. I'm uh, your host for tonight's Telephone Town Call with the Public Service Alliance of Canada in the National Capital Region. We're going to be calling over 21,000 members tonight, so please hang on the line and we'll be with you shortly as we uh, get everybody on the phone. So let me introduce our first speaker, PSAC's National President Robin Benson. Robin, can you help put the current political climate into context for us? What are we up against right now? Well, thank you very much, Nicholas, and thank you to everyone on the phone for joining us uh, tonight's call and, of course, spending part of your Wednesday evening with us. Bill C-4 is all about making it easier for the government and Treasury Board to come after us in the next round of bargaining and to strip away our long-standing negotiated rights. If passed, Bill C-4 is going to give the government the power to designate any employee it wants as essential and to wait, take away that person's right to strike. If the government decides to designate 80% or more employees, we will then be forced into arbitration. And to make matters worse, the legislation changes the rules of arbitration so that it's no longer a fair or neutral process. I had the opportunity to meet with Treasury Board President Tony Clement shortly after the bill was tabled in Parliament. And of course, I was there to voice our outrage at the gutting of our rights. He said point blank that he didn't believe in consultation, and uh, he was doing this to make it easier to take away our rights, uh, and of course, our rights such as sick leave. Then a few days later, he was in Calgary at the Conservative Party of uh, Canada's convention, arguing that the compensation of federal public servants is too high, and he intends to bargain it down. He's attacking our rights because he has no respect for us as government employees. He thinks that we abuse sick leave and that we don't pull our weight in the workplaces. And that's uh, what he's told the CBC in a recent interview, so I'm certainly not misquoting the gentleman. But the government is also attacking us because our union has been effective in defending public servants and public services. We won a major policy grievance on alternation. We got EI benefits for laid off workers. We won in the courts on pay equity, against discrimination, and for collective bargaining rights. This is why the government is trying to stack the deck in its favor. Over the last couple of years, when the government has cut services and jobs across the federal public service, we have taken strong action. We've, we've taken action in the media, in the workplace, and in the communities to defend PSAC members and the services that they provide to Canadians. Most recently, we've been campaigning against the closure of Veterans Affairs offices across the country. Folks in Sydney, Nova Scotia held a rally over the Remembrance Day weekend, and over 3,000 people demonstrated to save the services our veterans deserve. And now the government is in terrible trouble over the closures and other cuts to veterans services. Our work on veterans' issues shows that when we build a united front like the folks in Sydney did, the government doesn't get away with their constant attacks. Now is when we need to come together to oppose Bill C-4 and other attacks on our rights. Bill C-4 is not game over by a long shot. It's actually game on. Even if the bill is passed, we have to keep working to stop the government from stripping away our rights. We're going to defend our collective agreement rights regardless of what they do. But we can only do that by sticking together and making sure that all members are on side. I look forward to your ideas tonight about how we can work together to protect our rights going forward. And back to you, please, Nicholas. Thank you very much, Robin. That was Robin Benson, PSAC's National President. And you can ask our question live on the air uh, at the end of this town hall. All you have to do is press 9 on your phone. For those of you just joining us, welcome to this telephone town hall, town hall aimed at giving you the information you need about Bill C-4 and how it affects you. Right now, we're being joined on the call by thousands of PSAC members across the National Capital Region. We're going to go live to your questions in just a few minutes, but before we do, we're going to hear from Larry Russo, the, the Regional Executive Vice President for the National Capital Region. And remember, we can, you can ask your question by pressing 9 on, the, on, your, on your dial tone. One of the great things about this town hall is we have the ability to uh, pull uh, the people on the call 
asking a question uh, so we can get a better understanding of your concerns. So let's do a quick poll right now. So the Conservative government has shown little respect for the services our members provide. They've cut thousands of jobs affecting crucial programs and services. And now, as Robin has mentioned, they're moving to undermine our rights. They continue to use attacks on public service workers to divert attention from their scandals and the real impact of their cuts to public services on public service workers and the communities they serve. So the question is, what would you be willing to do to help keep your rights and benefits? Please listen to all five options before you press a button. Again, the question is, what would you be willing to do to keep your rights and benefits? Your options are as follows. Press 1 if you would talk to your family and friends about what the Conservative government is doing. Press 2 if you would contact your MP by phone, email, or in person. Press 3 if you would talk to your coworkers and ask them to get involved. Press 4 if you would do all of these things. And press 5 if you don't if you prefer not to take any action. Go ahead and uh, uh, make your selection on your dial tone and we'll be reading the results very shortly. So let's go to Larry. Larry Russo is uh, the Regional Executive Vice President of the National Capital Region and he's going to let us know a little bit about what the region is doing here to challenge the attack on our rights. But Larry will also give us a bit of uh, background on Bill C-4 and how it really affects members of the PSAC heading into bargaining with Treasury Board in 2014. So Larry, can you give us a little bit of an, uh, your take on what's going on? Yes, I can, and thank you very much, Nicholas. Free collective bargaining is an essential democratic right and a cornerstone of effective labor relations. This right was recognized in 2007 by the Supreme Court as a constitutional right. Having the power to strike can lead to collective agreement disputes being settled much more quickly, and it is an important part of our right to free collective bargaining. The employer has an enormous amount of power at the bargaining table. Having the right to go on strike provides unions with the bargaining power required to achieve fair settlement. This bill, Bill C-4, will give the federal government the unilateral right to designate employees as essential. The bill also says that if 80% or more of the employees of a bargaining unit are essential, bargaining unit can't take strike action. Therefore, we anticipate the government will use this new power to greatly expand the number of employees who are essential, thereby significantly restricting our right to strike. The right to collective bargaining, by definition, must include the right to strike or access to a fair and impartial third-party arbitration system when bargaining reaches an impasse. The new bill will limit the right to strike and at the same time change the rules of arbitration such that it is neither fair nor impartial. In addition, Bill C-4 significantly reduces the health and safety protections we all enjoy. The bill changes the definition of danger to only include imminent risks. This change is life-threatening. We cannot underestimate that. It's a fundamental shift that makes it difficult for workers under federal jurisdiction to refuse dangerous work. All authority and powers of health and safety officers are now being removed and placed and vested with the minister, making it far easier for employers to ignore health and safety issues. It also politicizes the process of monitoring and enforcing health and safety protections. These are just some of the changes that the government is proposing to make it easier for them to ram through unfair collective agreements in the next round. But we can and we must take action to protect our rights. Here in the nation's capital, we're doubling, redoubling our efforts to reach out to you and your fellow members to build a community of action against this government's attacks on our rights. In the last few weeks alone, we've begun running ads in various newspapers, including full-page ads in EMC community papers and front-page ads in Metro News Ottawa. We've also got more ads coming to bus downtown shelters, and we'll be ramping up our messaging strategy on Facebook and other social social media networks. We've also organized membership information sessions. Earlier today, I joined hundreds of members at the Ottawa Marriott Hotel and then later at the Gatineau Ramada Plaza Hotel to discuss Bill C-4 in person. And tomorrow, Thursday, we'll have a noon hour meeting in Gatineau at the Centre des Congrès from 11.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. Half-hour sessions. Look for the posters. Look, we've been plant-gating this information. So, 
We've also increased, very importantly, our collaboration with other federal unions, whether it be the Canadian Association of, Pub of Professional Employees, the Association of Justice Council, which represents government lawyers, and of course, we're working with the Canadian Labour Congress and provincial labour councils to ensure broad resistance to this bill, not to mention PIPs. However, in this region, the most important thing that we need to do is have you, our members, start taking action. Let's not forget, there are over 50,000 PSAC members just like you in the Ottawa Gatineau region. If we all just took a few minutes to either write or call regional MPs, several of whom are conservative MPs in this region, to tell them that we oppose this bill, that can make and it will make a big difference. I also want to ask you as a member to get in touch with the PSAC local in your workplace and ask about activities surrounding Bill C-4. And if your local is not particularly active, please consider getting involved and making it a functional local. After all, we are at a critical point here and now is the best time to get plugged into your union. Remember, the government wants to divide and conquer, but the only way we can overcome this is if we stick together and work in solidarity with each other. Now, back to you, Nicholas. Thanks a lot, Larry. That's great. In fact, I'm really encouraged because we have the results of our first poll. The question, remember, was would you be, like to help to keep your rights and benefits? What would you do? 15% of you uh, decided that it, you would talk to your friends and family. 8% of you said you would contact your MP by phone, email, or in person. 13% said you would talk to your coworkers and ask them to get involved. And 58% of you said you would do all of the above, which is amazing. And 5% of you said you would prefer not to take any action. So I think that's great results, and I think it definitely shows that we're willing to take action. Um, before we go to some questions, I'm going to actually take another poll based on something that both Robin and Larry touched on. Is The government is suggesting an overhaul of public service sick leave. And Treasury Board President Tony Clement has been making all sorts of claims about sick leave use, abuse, and absenteeism without any facts to back up his claims. Even Statistics Canada has said his statistics don't wash. So how important is this issue to you? You're going to have four options. Press 1. Sick leave is very important and you want to fight to keep your sick leave benefits. Press 2 if it's somewhat important to you but you're open to negotiation on sick leave. Press 3 if you're not concerned about changes to sick leave. And press 4 if you do not have any information to make the right decision right now. So please go ahead and vote on that. I'll give you the results very shortly. Remember to press 9 if you, have to, if you want to ask a question live on the air. Uh, to either Larry or Robin or our experts Krista and uh, Denis on health and safety and collective bargaining. So I think we're going to go to our first question right now. Well, thank you so much, Kathleen, for participating on the call, and thank you so much for asking that question, which is a question, by the way, that most people are asking. So very apropos, very on the, uh, on, on the mark. So what are we going to be doing going forward? We are going to be fighting this at all levels. The first thing is what we're doing tonight. We have to reach out to all of our members, to all of you, and get the information and the proper information out there. You know that when Tony Clement says that each and every one of us takes 18 days a year in sick leave, we know that is false. That is really skewing the numbers and he's mixing apples and oranges. We have to get the proper information out there. An informed member is a member who's ready to get engaged. So we are going to engage you. We've asked you this evening to get involved with your local. So at the local level and in the workplace, we can make a difference. When managers throughout the public service, are hearing workers, are hearing people saying, we are upset, we are not happy. Believe me, that percolates up. The next thing we have to do is we have to talk to communities. We have to talk to our families, our cousins, our sisters, our brothers. We have to turn around public opinion, and we can do so. Because once, not only 220,000 unionized federal public service employees across the country hear about the secret and almost covert way in which the government is changing our rights, it's not right. So 
once people start hearing about this, getting the proper information, they are getting upset and they want to take action. So what kind of actions can we take? Well, we are really going to make sure that not only are we going to be challenging where we can, we are analyzing everything that is being done in this C4, in the bill, and we are getting our legal experts to see exactly where we're going to be able to mount the challenges, so we will be fighting this on the legal front as well. And of course, we're going into collective bargaining. In the coming months, we will be sitting down with the employer, and we are going to show this employer that we are united in, in, to, and together in solidarity in opposing at every step along the way. And we will show not only this government, but the public, all right, what we're doing. And, of course, we cannot forget the big picture as well, which is a political picture. We are asking you and all of our members to write your MPs. We are lobbying our MPs in the National Capital Region as well as in regions across the country. We're setting up teams of volunteers who will sit down as constituents and sit down and lobby MPs. We know that C4 is going to pass, but we want to absolutely talk to the MPs and make sure that they are getting that message loud and clear from us. So we're going to be fighting at many, many levels, okay, all together. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Larry, and thank you very much for that question. Um, the next thing I'd like to do is just give you the results of the uh, sick leave question. Um, so the question was, how important is the issue of sick leave to you? And 72% of you said it was very important and you want to keep fighting to keep your sick leave. 22% of you said that it would be somewhat important, but you would be open to negotiation. Only 2% are not concerned about the changes to sick leave, and 4% do not have enough information to make a decision right now. So that's pretty decisive uh, answers from, uh, from all of you on the call tonight. Remember that if you have a question, please dial 9 and we can ask your question on the air. Hi, David, and uh, yes, thanks for the question, and thanks for being on the call tonight. Uh, we've had uh, several meetings, uh, that being the National Joint Council Bargaining Agents, so all of the unions that are involved with the uh, federal government and their agencies. Uh, we've had at least, uh, oh, I'd say half a dozen uh, meetings of late. Uh, we're certainly working very well together. We've struck a subcommittee. We're looking at uh, doing uh, some lobbying together. My understanding is that the Marriott today at lunchtime. Some of the other unions had their members attend as well. Um, but it's not just the federal government uh, unions that are, are uh, supporting us. Uh, I think it's uh, fair to be noted that Unifor, uh, Brother Jerry Diaz, who is the new president of the new union, Unifor, has come out publicly in support of the PSAC and the other bargaining agents, as has Brother Paul Moist, who is the president of QP, which is the largest uh, public sector or uh, uh, union uh, aside from us, so, you know, the municipal uh, workers. So both of those individuals have spoken out publicly. As a matter of fact, there was a rally uh, right outside the Conservative uh, Convention in Calgary uh, last weekend, I think it was, and uh, Brother Moy spoke at that rally. So uh, we're affiliates of the Canadian Labour Congress. There's 3.2 million members of the CLC, as we fondly call it, and those members will be supporting Supporting us, so uh, I can say that uh, we uh, uh, certainly have the support. And you might have noticed uh, just recently, uh, after Labor Day, there was a series of uh, ads on uh, TV. Uh, they were, I call them the sunny ads, but they were certainly uh, very catchy, and they were about Fairness Works. And uh, those ads are actually PSAC ads as well, because we're an affiliate of the Canadian Labor Congress, and because we are collectively working together in talking to our members one-on-one-on-one, on one on one, coast to coast to coast, uh, we are part of that ad campaign. So where you see CLC, think PSAC, because uh, we're very much a part of it. So uh, I do want to thank you for your question and let you know that we're all in this collectively together. Thank you very much, Robin. And uh, I think our next question comes on collective bargaining.
Thanks so much for your question, Philip. And I certainly uh, understand what you're what you're saying because you're thinking that it's going to be a government strategy to designate 75 percent, just shorter that magic 80 percent, so that you can't go to arbitration. Uh, but let's be really clear. Let's think about some of the creative uh, strike actions that we've taken in the past. We've had workless Wednesdays. We've had rotational strikes. We've had uh, uh, you know 10 percent of bargaining units out there, uh, strategic areas to be at. So. I mean, there's certainly ways to do a strike should we need to fill up. But what we need to do is work collectively together. We need to go into collective bargaining, uh, ensuring that we're going to get the best uh, collective agreement we can, solid, uh, that it's it's fair, it's equitable, uh, that there are no concessions. And we can only do that if our membership is supportive and if our membership starts to work now and if our membership starts to talk to MPs now. Because uh, the government can try whatever games it wants to try, and certainly Mr. Clement has been uh, very good about uh, making his comments, um, but there are ways to work around that. So yes, we're very cognizant that they could designate 75%, but they still have to look at the security uh, of the country before they do their designation. So I think that Mr. Clement would be hard-pressed uh, answering Canadians as to why folks would be designated that didn't need to be. So we'll we'll certainly be watching them, but uh, Philip, you know as well as I do that we've been creative in the past and we'll be creative in the future. Thanks, Robin, and thank you, Philip, for your question. The next question here is uh, regarding our legal options. So I'm going to ask our, our Director of Collective Bargaining, Krista Devine, to take that. Hi, yes. Um, as, as you know, uh, and has been mentioned by Robin and Larry, uh, we see the rights that are under attack in this bill as fundamental rights, and they are rights that we believe are protected by the Charter. So we are um, already preparing our uh, legal challenge along with the other unions in the NJC, and as soon as this bill is passed, we'll be looking at exactly what the form that bill takes, and we uh, will be challenging it um, as soon as we see the final version. Okay, thank you very much, Krista. Uh, Jean-Pierre wants to know a little bit about how he can stay informed with his union. Um, maybe, Larry, you want to take that question? Yes, and, and again, Jean-Pierre, thank you for the question. Thank you for participating on the call. So as I was saying uh, with Lee's uh, earlier, uh, we are going to uh, be putting a lot of information out there. There already is a lot of information at psac.com. And we have the regional website, which of course is psac-ncr.com. So there is information out there. What you are going to have to do is take that information. You're going to have to become familiar with it, but also make sure that you attend the meetings that are going to be held in the coming weeks and indeed the coming months as we go into collective agreements, uh, as, as we go into uh, uh, bargaining. So just keep yourself, there's going to be a wealth of information out there, but the thing is to make sure that you're getting the information from the proper source, and that is your union. We are going to be very present on Facebook as well, and of course we are going to be using the social media to get the message out there. So you will be uh, getting information, and always remember, Jean-Pierre, that you can contact the regional office at any time in Gatineau or the regional office in Ottawa, uh, where you are closest uh, to at your workplace, and you can talk to any regional representative to get more information. Make sure that you also get in contact with the stewards in your workplace. Uh, go in and say hello to your local president. Let's get people talking and let's get people meeting together and pizza lunches and all of that stuff so that we can all be on side and we can really fight this good fight together. Thank you again, Jean-Pierre. Thank you very much. Uh, the next question is, is from Allison. Uh, Allison wants to know how we're going to uh, be protected if we speak out. Go ahead, Allison. Thank you very much, Allison. I think that's a really good question. I'm going to ask Krista to answer you. Go ahead, Krista. No, I, th I think you've touched on a critical piece here, and uh, we all know that this employer is really um, 
uh, taking advantage of people's fear, and they are whenever we are organizing events, they're very aware of that and um, try to create a culture of intimidation. But the fact is, you absolutely have a right to contact your member of parliament to write those letters. There's no question about that. You have um, a right to participate in social media outside of the workplace. I think if you are participating in activities that you are not sure about, make sure that you're talking to your uh, steward, your local president, regional office, the people that are organizing those activities, and ask the questions. because. Um, there's no doubt in my mind that this uh, government will continue to exploit the fear that people fear uh, in the workplace, and you do have rights. Uh, your um, brothers and sisters in the union have fought for those rights over the last few decades, and we will be there to ensure that they're protected. Thank you very much, Krista. The next question, in fact, we've got a couple of questions on this issue about the impact of C4 on the current round of bargaining. So I'm going to go to Linda. Go ahead, Robin. Thank you very much for your question, Linda. So, yes, you're right. You're currently in negotiations, and you have been for quite a while. Uh, at this point in time, C4 has uh, not passed. Uh, you know, we're doing the work that we need to do. We're trying to carve out uh, the uh, changes to the Labor Relations Act uh, uh, from C4. Uh, but I, I, you know, I'm not sure that we'll be successful in terms of the lobbying that we're going to be doing. Having said that, it won't impact you at this particular point in time. They were clear that those that were already in the process would not be impacted uh, from C4. So that's the news we know right now, but we will certainly uh, keep uh, Union of Taxation Employees, uh, Canada Revenue Agency uh, uh, folks uh, uh, apprised of it. They, they do handouts uh, every month, so if you haven't received any information, uh, there will be a handout uh, coming up in the next couple of weeks because they, uh, uh, they're one unit that certainly keeps their membership uh, in the know. Thank you, Robin. You can obviously, obviously uh, sign up on our website for email uh, from uh, all the different bargaining units that are currently or in negotiations or will be in negotiations in the future. So please go to the PSACUnion.ca or uh, SaintZikaIFPC.ca and sign up for email alerts. Uh, I've got one here from Sylvain in Ottawa uh, regarding health and safety concerns. Go ahead, Sylvain. Thanks for your question, Sylvain. We're really fortunate to have Denis Saint Jean, our health and safety officer, on the call. Denis, are you available? Can you tell? Can you ask? Uh, can you answer the question for Sylvain? Yes, thank you, Sylvain, for your question, and it's one we're being asked more and more as well. Uh, as you know, having an inspectorate that can actually respond to complaints and being in the workplace does provide you with some leverage at the uh, health and safety committee levels. The proposed Bill C-4 changes the dynamic by ensuring, first of all, that the minister can actually appoint someone to be a health and safety officer, an inspector. Uh, right now, there's no plans, as far as I know, to actually make some restrictions on who she can appoint. The other significant change, of course, that has a serious impact on all of this is the ability for the minister to actually enforce the Canada Labor Code Part 2 in, in an electronic manner, in other words, doing virtual inspections. Imagine in your workplace if you were to call for a complaint and the only response would be a telephone call. I mean, that would certainly change the dynamic at the health and safety committee level and would make it more difficult to have complaints followed up by the, uh, by the federal government. Thank you very much, Denis. There's more information on our website on the changes to health and safety, and we're going to continue to put pressure on the government on that issue. Um, we have, I think, time for one more question, but remember, you can leave a message at the end of the call with your contact information, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Uh, please do so. Um, we have Alan in Orleans uh, has a question regarding sick leave. Robin, please, uh, can you give some information to the members? 
Well, certainly for everyone that's on the call and, and uh, uh, you know, any of the newspapers you've uh, read or listened to any radio uh, interviews, uh, Mr. Clement is certainly coming after your sick leave. He has made no bones about it. I've had uh, two face-to-face, I've had more than two face-to-face meetings with him, but at two face-to-face meetings uh, as late as a, a couple of weeks ago, uh, he clearly articulated that uh, C4, uh, Bill C4 and the changes uh, contained within it are uh, aimed at collective bargaining next year and they're, they're aimed at uh, our sick leave. We, uh, uh, we've we been very clear that there will be no concessions and that we will fight to keep our sick leave. I've been very clear in any of the interviews that I've done is that we've had sick leave in our uh, collective agreement for over 30 years. I'm 33 years with the federal government and uh, I too have thousands of hours built up uh, and uh, that uh, we have no intention of uh, of giving up the sick leave. But I can tell you, brother, that uh, the only way that we can keep sick leave uh, is that if the membership is behind us and if the membership is mobilized and if the membership is prepared to stand up and take action to keep their sick leave. That's the discussion we've had with the National Joint Council uh, bargaining agents. Uh, the other unions have uh, clearly indicated that they're they're behind PSAC, they're with us all the way, that we will fight to keep sick leave for our membership. But it's not a fight just for the leadership. Is it a fight? It is a fight for each and every member of the PSAC. Thank you, Robin, and thank you, Alan, for your question. I think that wraps up our session for tonight. Uh, Robin, do you have any few uh, last words for our members on the call? Well, I certainly do. First of all, I want to thank everyone for being on the call, and I want to thank you for uh, the great questions. I think that uh, taking time out of uh, your busy schedule uh, to be with us tonight uh, uh, is very much appreciated. Uh, you know, we we clearly uh, have said that uh, uh, for us in the leadership, it's all about the membership, and uh, we want to work with you and for you. So tonight's town hall is just an example of one of the ways that we're doing an outreach to our membership. So that we can speak with you, uh, hear what you have to say to us, address your concerns, and work collectively together. If you didn't have your question answered, and uh, I'm sorry that we couldn't get to all of the questions, but if you have uh, uh, questions and or comments or ideas that you know wasn't addressed on the town hall tonight, there's certainly a chance at the end of the call to uh, leave a message. And, and I hope that you do, uh, because Larry and I are certainly uh, looking forward to hearing from you and our continued uh, work together. Larry, any last words? Well, thank you very much, Robin, and thank you for being here on the call this evening. Uh, it's always great to have our national president, you know, showing our membership that to the highest level, from the stewards to the national president, we are all in this together. And uh, I just want to say that in the meetings that I've been uh, attending today uh, and in the past uh, couple of weeks, people really get it when what we signed up for when we came to work in the public service was we wanted job security, we wanted good pay and benefits, and most of all, we wanted to know that when we put in our 30 or 35 years, we will end up with a good, decent pension that we can count on. And now we're realizing that this government wants to take that away from us. They're going to chip away at it, and it's a slippery slope, and we have to stand together against this challenge on the attacks against our fundamental rights to get a fair contract and to get good working conditions in the workplace. So thank you, all of you who have come into the call tonight. It's been great, and I'm looking forward to meeting you in person so that we can ha have this fight together. Thank you. <clears throat> well, thank you very much, Robin and Larry and Krista and Denis, and thank you to all the PSAC members who took part in tonight's meeting. Please take one more minute just to leave us a personal message or a question after the call ends, and have a great evening. Thank you.